Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Tom's Gadget Garage. In today's video, we're going to be doing a hill climb test with the newly released Apollo Go. Now we're going to be doing this test today at Phoenix's South Mountain Preserve, um, which is a, you know, grueling uphill climb that goes anywhere from six to eight and a half miles in each direction. And really the differentiator between the six and the eight and a half miles is gonna be whether or not we make it to all three lookout points. Now, not all scooters that I test make it to all three. Now, one thing that's a little bit different about this test than my previous test is that we're coming up here on Saturday morning because unfortunately the last couple weekends have been really rainy here in the Phoenix area. And tomorrow, uh, Sunday, as well as Monday are supposed to be full of rain uh, and high winds. So wouldn't be ideal uh, to take a scooter out on a test like this. So we are coming out here on a Saturday morning and why that makes a difference is Sunday mornings are what they call silent Sunday. So they close the roads to, you know, automobile traffic. So you can't ride your car up the mountain, which is really nice because, you know, it allows people on bikes and scooters and other things, a little bit of peace of mind when going up and down the mountain. Uh, so unfortunately, you know, we're gonna have to contend with cars here today, uh, but we'll see how it goes. Now, keep in mind for this test, with all my gear, I do weigh in at about 205 pounds. Uh, we do have the Go set in comfort mode right now uh, with a maximum speed of 20 miles an hour. And of course, we may dial it up to sport mode, uh, which unlocks the scooter to 28 miles an hour. So we'll see if we need that today. But so far, so good. All right, we are about two miles into this trip. And like I mentioned before, it's about eight and a half to all three lookout points. Uh, so we'll see how the scooter does and that'll help us determine whether or not we're gonna go to one, two or three of these things. And I'm just keeping an eye out on the battery. You know, this is a dual motor scooter uh, and we are going up a you know, relatively steep hill to the top. So battery is definitely something I'm looking at because I do need to make it back down to my car because uh, I do not want to be walking down this road with no bike lanes uh, pushing a scooter. That wouldn't be ideal at all, so. Now I've mentioned it before, but one thing that I really like about the Apollo Go is that it's got a really ultra premium feel to it. I think Apollo has done a fantastic job of dialing in the ride experience on this scooter. Um, you know, with all the scooters that I've tested in the past, this has got to be uh, the most solid and uh, dialed in feeling scooter I've ever ridden, to be honest. So uh, kudos to Apollo uh, for putting together what feels to be like a very solid built scooter. Of course, we'll be testing this over the long range. You know, I'll have, uh, you know, try and put on 250 and 500 miles on this scooter and then check in with y'all and let you know how it does. But so far, I'm really impressed. Nice thing about today is it's not too windy. It's uh, beautiful, clear skies. I think it's uh, in the 60s right now. It's supposed to get to a high of like uh, 82, 83 degrees a day, but starting tomorrow, it's supposed to be really ugly weather with the storms and wind coming through. So we will enjoy it uh, while we ride today. Uh, and over the coming weeks, I'll actually be testing uh, another scooter. I'll be posting a review for that, which is a really budget friendly scooter uh, in the sub $400 range. So keep an eye out on that. Uh, and uh, I've actually recently got in contact with an uh, e-skate company. They make electronic longboards, uh, and they'll be sending over one of those here shortly. So really excited to test that out. Now, if you're curious why I set the maximum speed of this scooter to 20 miles an hour in comfort mode for this test, is that I'd like to benchmark this against some other scooters that I've tested out here, uh, especially the Segway 9 Bot Max G2, uh, which, you know, has got the same size battery uh, as this scooter, but it has a single motor instead of dual motors. Now, all else being equal, you know, your dual motor scooters are gonna consume uh, more power, but they do give you the edge uh, in terms of uh, hill climb ability, so. All right, so we are at the four mile mark and we've got about 60% battery remaining. So we'll keep an eye out on that. So this is where we start getting into some of the steeper sections. So we'll see how well the scooter does. Uh, the 9 Bot Max G2 in some of these sections would slow down to three or four miles an hour. Um, we haven't slowed down that much, so we'll see how, uh, 
uh, this scooter does. And this is really where I'm gonna have my biggest concerns uh, riding this scooter up is battery consumption. So that's ultimately a part of the test that we're doing today uh, to see if, you know, this dual motor scooter with a 15 amp hour, 36 volt battery is sufficient to get us to the top. Now, I think for most people looking to buy a scooter, I mean, what we're doing right now is not the typical uh, thing, you know, riding uphill for, you know, six to eight miles straight, especially on steep uh, inclines like this. So uh, what this is really meant to be is a stress test for the scooter, you know, to see what its capabilities are, what its limitations are, you know, because once we know the limits, we know where, you know, we can ride comfortably. So, all right, so we are officially at the five mile mark and we've got just north of 50% battery remaining. Uh, to put that into perspective, I normally do my turnarounds at between 30 and 40% battery uh, for the sake of ensuring uh, that we have enough juice in the tank to make it back to the car, <laughs> which is really important because, like I mentioned, I don't want to be pushing this scooter uh, down this hill uh, in a place that doesn't have bike lanes or any safe place for somebody to walk. Let's see here, we're slowing down. Nine, 10 miles an hour, so we're still making it up. We'll go ahead and, let's see. We'll go to our first lookout up here. Uh, and if you are curious, uh, the inclines on this route range anywhere from uh, two percent to ten percent grade and so you know really good test uh, for long-term hill climbability and right now we are at uh, six miles and 48 percent battery remaining and we are officially at our first lookout point uh, not sure if we're gonna make it to the other two but uh, we'll definitely give it a try all right, so I don't know if you all can see this, but uh, this is our first lookout point. And from here, you've got a beautiful view of Tempe, Arizona, uh, Phoenix Sky Harbor International Airport. You've got uh, downtown Phoenix over there. Um, in terms of the mountains right there, you've got Camelback Mountain, which if you're ever in the Phoenix area is an absolute grueling hike. So definitely a great challenge. You've got Piastewa Peak uh, to the left of it out there. And so this is the perfect day to be out here uh, because it's a beautiful clear day uh, and there aren't too many people out here, which is always nice. So we're gonna go ahead and hop on the Apollo Go and see if we can get to one of the other lookout points. All right, and this is a great uh, test of the uh, downhill ride experience on the Apollo Go. Uh, in the early days of the Max G2 when they first released it, there were a lot of people experiencing things like phantom braking and stuff like that. And so far, none of that with uh, the Apollo Go. Little test of the brakes there, solid. And we'll build up our speed and make our way up uh, to the next lookout point. Now I'm keeping a very close eye on the battery levels because on the Apollo Go, I think they're gonna need to update the way that the battery is displayed uh, because, um, you know, you get these pretty big drops in battery. Um, you know, it's not updating, it feels like in real time, it feels like it does periodic updates, you know? And so, you know, you look down and it'll hang out at, you know, 59%, for example, and you, you know, for the next five, six minutes, it's at 59%, and then all of a sudden it's at 51%. Uh, so you don't have that uh, granular drop um, in an estimated battery remaining, so. All right, and we are officially at seven miles with 37% battery remaining. So we'll see if we make it to the next lookout. All right, so there you have it. We've officially made it to two out of the three lookout points which puts us at about eight miles of riding up this thing. And so, uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and turn around, but this is what the other lookout point looks like. So I'm gonna go ahead and head back down the mountain because uh, 
I definitely don't want to be doing any walking of this scooter today. So it'll be a good opportunity to test out some of the regen braking on the way down. Now, one thing to keep in mind when uh, going downhill on a scooter with regenerative braking, uh, one thing Apollo does mention in the instruction manual is that if you're going to be going down like really steep stuff for extended periods of time uh, to, you know, conservatively use your dedicated regen throttle because you don't want to ride that thing the whole way down because you could potentially uh, heat up the controller to the point where your scooter overheats and so definitely something to keep in mind that's why it's always nice to have man your scooter equipped with manual brakes like drums or discs all right so we're gonna have about eight mile trek back to the car the good news is we've got uh, gravity on our side so a lot of this is gonna I should say most of this is gonna be downhill uh, so we will use our throttle sparingly hopefully we can get that regen brake to give us some extra juice on the way down but I'll try and minimize the use of the brakes as much as possible here. We're just using gravity right now. We're going 24 miles an hour. Coming into this turn. Oh, I had to hit the brakes there a little bit. <laughs> and what's nice about the Apollo Go is it, it literally feels like I'm completely freewheeling right now. The scooter's not trying to slow me down uh, like the Ninebot Max G2 does. Uh, and so, you know, with that scooter, uh, it works really, really hard at trying to keep you below 24 miles an hour when going downhill. Uh, with this scooter, of course, it's got a higher top speed. And so, you know, barreling down the mountain at, you know, over 24 miles an hour isn't a problem. You know, so today we made it to two out of the three lookout points, which is a-OK -okay in my book. The reason why is the difference between making it uh, from two to three is about a mile total uh, in difference in the ride. So uh, not concerned uh, at all with that. Um, you know, I will likely test this scooter again on this mountain, you know, now that I've got a feel for what the range looks like. You know, right now we're at 9.4 miles. We've got 32% battery remaining and that did drop to 27% uh, a couple times there and so it looks like the regen is definitely uh, working out here but uh, yeah now we just want to make sure we can make it back to the car so I don't know if you can see on the camera but those are the radio towers up top uh, south mountain there that would have been our third lookout point which isn't a whole lot higher uh, than the other lookout point that we were at it's just, you know, you kind of got to go down to make it back up there. So that's where that extra mile comes in. All right, we've got a little bit of a hill climb here. And we are 21% battery remaining. So we need more downhill. <laughs> we are officially at 10 miles uh, on this trip with 21% battery remaining. So we ate some battery up on that incline back there. So let's see if we can recoup some of this. Now, if you are curious, I do have the tires inflated to 50 PSI, which is the recommended pressure from Apollo. So I made sure those were filled up this morning before I headed out. And it looks like we've got a little bit of a headwind coming down here. And this is a big part of the uh, downhill section here. So hopefully, we can recoup some juice. So as we got 27% battery remaining instead of the 21. And we are just coasting 25 miles an hour down the mountain, leveraging gravity to its fullest extent. Not interested in brakes right now want to extend this ride out as much as possible 26 miles an hour Just 
just got to watch out around these corners because we do have cars coming around. All right, and we've got another little bit of an incline here, so this is where uh, we use up battery. Now, coming out here with cars on the road is a little bit uh, different. Normally, there's no cars at all whatsoever on Sundays, but here we are on a Saturday. And I wasn't sure if I wanted to do this ride uh, on a Saturday. Reason being that they have an, quite a bit of accidents up here. People going off the side of the cliff, taking turns too fast. All right, we are back uh, into the descent again. So we'll uh, leverage our good friend Gravity to make it down. And we are coasting right now. potholes you gotta watch out for those because they hide in the shadows and we'll take this turn we are at about 12 miles and we've got 27 percent battery remaining still so all right we are in our home stretch All right, so we are officially at 14 miles with approximately 21% battery remaining. And uh, honestly, I'm actually really impressed. Um, you know, this morning I was unsure as to whether or not we would get beyond that first lookout point because it is a dual motor scooter, which is gonna have, you know, more power, potentially more power consumption um, when compared to a single motor scooter. And I've mostly tested single motor scooters up here, aside from the awesome Gallop, which is a whole another class of scooter that's an off-road scooter uh, with, you know, a significant amount of power and a jumbo sized battery. So, you know, that scooter screamed up and down that mountain, but uh, it's also an 88 pound scooter. So it doesn't have the benefits of being lightweight like the Go or the, you know, Nine Bob Max G2 or some of the other scooters I've tested like the Richter S9. Alright, so there you have it. That was our hill climb test with the newly released Apollo Go. And on this particular test, we were able to cover 15.3 miles at an average speed of approximately 17 miles an hour. Uh, in terms of the motor controller, it did get up to 125 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 51 degrees Celsius, but no errors, overheating or anything. Uh, so this scooter did it really well. We were riding up and down that mountain for just shy uh, of an hour. Uh, and so overall, this was about 1,650 feet uh, in elevation gain for this test. So really impressed with what the Apollo Go was able to do here today. Um, you know, even with the dual motors, it's able to cover a lot of ground uh, range-wise uh, with leaving us about 13% of battery in the tank. So let me know in the comments below if you have any questions, happy to answer them. Now, if you are interested in purchasing the Apollo Go, I will include some links as well as a coupon code in the description of this video uh, and just know that if you do use those links uh, they do help support this channel they keep the wheels turning on the reviews that we feature on tom's gadget garage so thank you in advance and as always thank you so much for tuning into tom's gadget garage we'll see you next time